And our special guest tonight, Michael Tellinger, as we talk about just how we evolved and some structures on this planet. You know, uh, we're talking about the work of Zechariah Sitchin and his theories of the 12th planet. Of course, we'll talk a little bit with Michael about that, too. But a lot of people have devoted many careers to uh, investigating this this phenomenon as well. Uh, Robert uh, Safier does a uh, very thorough job trying to uh, coordinate all the various people who are talking about this. And it's growing, I think. It's growing and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, the more we look at, at the different race groups on planet Earth, you know, we call ourselves the human race, but we're not one race. We're distinctly several different race groups. And uh, that becomes very interesting and often a very sensitive subject, but something that needs to be discussed openly without, you know, um, racial prejudice and, uh, and so forth. So it becomes more and more compelling. Um, the evidence is, becomes overwhelming that we are... A, a species that has ended on this planet by some default or premeditated action, and that we 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 did not really evolve to this point in time. Um, we somehow were manipulated into this into this point in time. There was for for a specific reason, no doubt. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, some evolutionists, Michael, would say, George, don't use the word "popped up." We we evolved, yet it, it, it's pretty convincing that we kind of just showed up all of a sudden, isn't it? Exactly. It, it's not just convincing. It's, it, you know, this is what, what I deal with almost on a daily basis now, discovering these ancient structures here in South Africa. Um, because, you know, we, we've been promoting the, the concept of cradle of humankind here in South Africa, and it's a very strong selling point for the tourists to come here because this is where supposedly the first humans either appeared or evolved or whatever you want to call it and and there's overwhelming evidence for for that for the first humans to have appeared here in southern africa south africa zimbabwe mozambique and this this part of the world and and yet there's very little evidence of these first humans so we did pop up and it's the other important thing is that people get confused all the time is this cradle of humankind that we that that is being sold to the world doesn't have any human skeletons in it. We have hominids in there, Astropithecus uh, africanus and, and um, Miss, Mrs. Place and Littlefoot and wonderful examples of over 500 fossils that have been excavated from the Stagfontein Caves just uh, sort of northwest of Johannesburg. Um, over 500 fossils, if, I, if I've got it right. Uh, but they're all hominids, no human skeletons there. So these are all the so, supposedly um, pre- pre-human um, evolutionary states. They are not human. And that's why I find it so important that we start finding these human settlements and human-built structures that indicate the presence of early Homo sapiens in Southern Africa, and I think we've just stumbled upon them. I'm, I'm extremely excited about the work we're doing here right now. It's going to really sh uh, send shockwaves through, through the archaeological and historical fields in the world because no one has been expecting it. And, and here it is. It just suddenly ar arrived. It's been here all the time. It's been here for years and years. And it's just been shunned and shoved aside as recently built stone settlements by the, the Bantu people when they first made the, the, the move down into southern Africa from, from north, west, and, and east Africa in the 13, uh, 1300s. Because remember, the Bantu people, the, or the black Africans, only arrived in southern Africa from about the 1300s. Prior to that, there were no Bantu or black Africans in southern Africa. There were other, other homo sapiens here, like the Khoisan people and the, the, what we call the Strandlurpers, and there were the Boscopoid people here, which I'll talk about a bit later, that were, that were recently unearthed in a place called Boscop that are between 10 and 30,000 years old and possibly older. And, and this has become a very hot political debate in South Africa because some people believe that you've become a racist and you've, you've, you're drawing racial lines. And it's got nothing to do with that. You just, you know, you've got to call it what it is. You've got to call it as you find it. You can't start becoming politically sensitive to one group or another. No, it's this is anthropology for crying out loud. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like when they discover the the the, the, the mummies, the, the the Aryan mummies uh, in China. 
you know, well, what are they going to say? Well, we discovered mummies in China. We can't tell you what race they were, you know. Come on. <laughs> you know what fascinates me, Michael, about, and, and I want to talk with you a little bit about Zechariah Sitchin's work to see if you're familiar with that. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, next hour we'll devote the time to this incredible structure here that we're talking about. But w w what fascinates me on this planet is the diverse many different races we have here. Is it because of environment and locale, or are these all, I've always thought about this, are, are these all various sex races from other extraterrestrials that have been here and you know they've manipulated in their own image so the uh the asian person the caucasian the african uh they are in the image of the extraterrestrial that came to this planet a long time ago have you ever thought of that yeah, absolutely. And, and once again, you, you obviously um, give this stuff a great deal of thought, and I think you put your finger right on the button one, one more time. Um, what, what, again, I, I look at this um, scientifically, genetically, and, and, um, and ecologically. You know, if we only appeared as a species 250,000 years ago, um, not enough time has passed for these different race groups to have evolved. And I don't care what kind of um, scientific evidence anybody throws at you. It's just not going to happen because the genetic, the, the genetics, the, the strength of the genetic pool that keeps the Asian person Asian is so strong that it, it, it defies any kind of argument or scientific uh, or, or a, a genetic evolution into that. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and the same goes with, with African people. Um, the, the strength of the gene pool of Africans is defies the, the, the movement away from that into somebody like me who's got a little pale skin and, and gets burned when I run into the sun. You yeah, know? yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. And there's not enough time that has is, that is passed on Earth for us to have evolved so dramatically into these three or four different, distinctly different race groups. And that's why when I, when I said earlier, we call ourselves the human race. Well, we're not really the human race because we are not one race group. We are three or four possibly more distinctly different race groups. But the, the, obvious, the obvious ones are the Caucasians, the, the Asians, the, the Chinese, I suppose. When I say Asian, I mean the, 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 the Chinese type um, mm -hmm. look. And then the, the, and the, the black African. And, and that is fascinating stuff because it is really it becomes a melting pot of of debate that what what is interesting is, is earlier this year i think it was in february craig venter the the, the so-called father of the human genome project uh, gave a speech which blew everyone's mind and it certainly blew my mind because he mentioned uh, some startling facts um until very recently we were all sold the, the story that all humans are 99.9% .9 genetically the same, right. identical. Well, that is no longer the case. Okay? With, the, with the Human Genome Project studies, they, they found out that between people and, and especially different race groups, there is up to a 2 or a 3% difference in their genetic structure. And that's he, that, that's a big difference, isn't it? It's a huge difference. <laughs> and now suddenly you go, oh, okay, now I understand. But it goes even, it becomes even more interesting when you start looking at different race groups. The way different race groups respond to environmental um, factors like malaria and other disease, the way race groups respond to medicine and medication, shows as much as a 15% genetic difference in their, in their response to, to these external factors. So that broadens the genetic difference even more. It's almost, Michael, as if they all came from different places in the universe. That's certainly what it seems like. Uh, it seems like they might have been a prototype kind of person built here and then another group of, of uh, by, by one group of extraterrestrial settlers for a specific purpose and by that I mean um, you know in my previous book Slave Species of God uh, and, and the work that Zachariah Sitchin has done the cloning of the humans by the Anunnaki many of your listeners mm -hmm. will be 
very familiar with that. That seems to be a specific point in time and possibly with some of the earliest human manipulation or manipulation of, of this new species called Homo sapien. Um, and yet there is another, uh, another um, theory or belief structure that, that says that there were advanced humans on planet Earth, the Lemurians and then later the Atlanteans, um, who were quite advanced and who were um, settled on this planet living a completely different kind of lifestyle that was then infiltrated and completely um, uh, overturned by these extraterrestrials. Well, that's a, that's an interesting theory, too. More to come, Michael, when we come right back on Coast to Coast AM.